Hi, Andy here from Andy's Golf Blog. Now, recently I received one of these. This is the ShotScope V3 GPS and performance tracking watch. It's the third watch from ShotScope. So I've previously owned the V1, I've owned the V2, and I've now got the V3. And I thought I'd produce this review video to tell you a bit more about the product and what to expect from it on the golf course. I've been using it for about four weeks now, and uh, so it's had a lot of usage, and there's a lot of things that I found out about the watch that maybe I wasn't so sure of before. So I thought I would just bring you a review to tell you more about how it's been performing. There's also a copy of this review um, in a written format with images on my golf blog, which is andysgolfblog.co.uk, as well as an unboxing video. So you can find out more about what comes inside the box when you get one of these delivered by the postman. So all of that available on my blog or on this uh, YouTube channel. So let's take a look at this in more detail. Okay, so let's start off with um, a little bit of information about the V3. Where can you buy it from? You can purchase it directly from ShotScope from today, the 6th of July, at an introductory price of $179.99. So that will run until the 31st of July, and then it will increase to £209. So if you act fast, you'll get a little bit of a saving there. Um, the watch itself is available in a range of different colours. I think there's five different colours you can choose from. So the watch face will be black, but the straps around here you can choose um, a color which suits which suits you as you'll see here I've gone for black but um, maybe I'm just a little bit boring the other co colors have been really quite popular on um, on the pre-order the v3 and v2 performance wise probably not a massive difference between the two okay so they both did uh, GPS they both did performance tracking so getting your stats your distances um, and, and they both do it really really well the big difference for me between the two is the visual of the watch um, and the packaging. So both of those things, ShotScope have really, really upped their game. There are a couple of little subtle differences which I'll talk about as I go through this review um, between the two, but most users will notice a difference in the look of the, the, the device because it's, it's really, really pretty, um, certainly compared to the V2. The watch itself, ShotScope have trimmed 20 millimeters off of the height uh, five millimeters off of the width of the watch and four millimeters off of the depth. So you'll see if I hold them up, you can actually see the difference in the watches. Okay, so there's a big difference both visually and in terms of the size. And just look how much bigger this V2 is compared to the V3. Impressively though, they've managed to create a bigger screen. So you actually have a bigger screen on this device than you did on the, um, the old device, which is great. Let's have a look at the packaging. So here's the, the box that the product comes in. Really, really nice looking packaging. I've done a full unboxing video, so you can have a look at that on my YouTube channel or on my uh, golf blog. But basically, it feels more like a kind of Apple product, to be honest with you. I love what they've done with the color choices. They've moved away from red and black, and they've just produced something that, on the shelf, will look really, really nice. And people will be picking this up because compared to the old box, it's a lot more pleasant on the eye. So um, watch my unboxing video if you want to find out more about what actually comes inside the V3's box. With regards to setup and play, for me as a V2 user, it was almost like business as usual. Um, I headed to the course after setting up on the phone, pairing with the, the, the phone charging device, headed out, okay? So I didn't really have to do too much. The instruction manual is really nice and slim and tells you everything you need to know to get you going, okay? So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I did charge the watch when I got it. So usually with electronic devices, they ship with a little bit of battery in it. For me personally, I just turn them off, give it a full charge, and then I use the product from, um, from that point onwards. So the device comes with its own new charging cable. Different from the old V2, which had a micro USB, this has a specific one which just connects over the watch and onto the little charging ports um, in there. Kind of like a Fitbit, basically. My only concern with that is that in my household, cables get stuffed in drawers. So because it's specific to this watch, I'm going to have to make sure I keep that one um, out of the, the way of the wife. Otherwise, it'll probably um, go missing and I won't be able to charge the device. So it has changed. But what that means is the watch charges much, much quicker. This watch can charge in two hours from flat. Whereas this one was kind of more four to five hours to get a full charge. So big, big improvement there with the, the charging. As I mentioned, for setup and play, I started the device up, 
synchronized it with my phone. I already had the ShotScope account, so I didn't need to create the account. And I found the process really quite straightforward. You just follow the on-screen information, make sure you've got the tags in your, your clubs, and you're good to go. I like the fact that the device ships with 35,000 preloaded courses, so there should be the courses for everybody in there. What I found when I turned up at my course um, for my first round, a couple of things. The labels on the courses were slightly wrong. Um, so we have a nine hole course and a main course. I found that I didn't know which one was actually the main course because the, the labels were basically both the same. So it wasn't until I eventually managed to connect that I found that I had connected to the par three course and not the, the main course. Uh, I fed this back to ShotScope and within the next day there was a firmware update launched out on my uh, device and I was up with the, the correct labels when I went to the course the next time, there was no problem. Much like the V2, the first time you arrive at the course, you should give yourself enough time to get the device up and running. They recommend about 10 minutes, so arrive early, turn the watch on, connect to the course, and that will allow the satellites to connect, the watch to connect, and you'll know that by the time you get on the tee, you should be able to, um, to start recording your round from that point onwards. So give yourself enough time the first time. It was always the same with the V1 and V2, but then for subsequent visits, you basically just connect when you're on the tee box, give it up, you know, maybe up to a minute and it, it pulls the, the information through. So set up and ease of play. If you're an existing user, really, really straightforward. If you're a new user, take the tags out of the box, put them in the correct club by screwing them in, and then set up the instructions, uh, or follow the instructions on the, the app or in the instruction manual, and away you go, straightforward. Um, the watch itself, much like the V2, gives you the option to um, track your GPS and uh, shot tracking. It allows you to use shot tracking only, or if you want to, you can use GPS only. So maybe if your battery's getting a little bit low, you could run on GPS only, or maybe say, well, I'm not bored about the GPS, I'll just track today. Um, for me personally, I always just use um, GPS tracking and um, the shot tracking as well. So I like to have all of the information when I'm on the course, and the information when I come off of the course. And that leads me on to the battery life on the device. So ShotScope V2, if you watch my review on this one, aside from the kind of look and the feel of the product, one of the biggest sort of bugbears for myself and other users was that it was only really capable of one round per charge. So a couple of times I went and played uh, an all day outing with two rounds, I had to quickly try and charge it during the lunch break and then it cut out before the end of the final um, second round. V3, however, up to 10 hours battery life. So you can charge it, you can go and play two rounds really comfortably. Um, and if you're just using it on the general watch mode, which I'll come to in a second, you can get up to 10 days out of the device, okay? So I charged mine on the Saturday morning, gave it a full charge. By the Monday, I still hadn't charged it, went out and played a full round with a GPS and a shot tracking. By the end of the round, I still had 65% left in it. I mentioned just there, there's the general watch mode. So you'll see here, this is in general watch mode just now. So it tells the time, that's what watch does. What ShotScope have done, have not only have they put in the watch mode so you can use it off the course, but they've redesigned the strap. So this is a kind of rubber strap that is really, really comfortable on the wrist and it's easy to put on. You'll notice here, whenever I connect it, there's lots of different holes. So it, it basically can allow for anyone who's put on a lot of weight during lockdown, you can still fit this on your wrist. The, the previous one, the V2, I never found the strap very comfortable. It's, it almost felt kind of plasticky and I found that I sweated a lot with this on the wrist. So what they've done is they've made a much nicer, more comfortable strap, um, which still allows obviously the tags to connect to the device. It doesn't, for me personally, uh, promote a kind of sweaty wrist. And of course, they've just made the thing much better looking. So if you want to, you can get one in a different colored strap or you can change them. I've gone for black because I think if I'm wearing it off the course, I just want something that's kind of more similar to what I would normally wear. But the watch itself just looks so much nicer. If I put them side by side here, you'll see it's a lot smaller. Um, it's not got a tiny wee screen and then a massive uh, surround on this one. You've just got the screen there. And it almost looks kind of like a, a you know an Apple watch or one of those sort of smart watches. So I have been found, finding myself using it off the course because it's comfortable, it looks good and it tells the time. Um, the only thing I would probably say that I would like to have seen was maybe some more functionality around the watch. So I've always worn a Fitbit because I like to collect my steps, but now that I've got this, I wouldn't wear them both, but off the course, I'm now not able to track my steps unless I have my phone on me. 
Um, so it's one of these things that for some people they maybe won't use it off the course, but the fact it tells the time, which let's be honest, that's what a watch is for, um, gives you those, you know, gives you the option to wear it there. And I think if you're wearing it off the course, then you're more inclined to actually make an effort to charge it so when you get to the course, it will have sufficient um, battery life available. So for me, yeah, massive improvement on the V2, certainly visually, and I like the fact that it can tell the time. Um, the only other thing I would probably say whilst I'm, I'm looking at the watch just now, the battery symbol at the top, it tells you how much charge you've got left on the visual, but I would probably like to see numbers there. I'd like to see what percentage, because looking at just now, I can't tell if you know the green percentage of battery is telling me that I've got 80% left, or is it maybe 60%? And when you get down to the finer numbers, like you know 20% and 15, it can make the difference seeing the number between maybe taking the watch out and trying it, or just leaving it at home, putting it on charge, because you don't want to get halfway through a round to find that it cuts out. Okay, so back to the course. Um, when you're using it on the golf course, it has all of the kind of performance options that your V2 had. So if you're wanting GPS, you basically look at your watch and it will tell you the yardage to the, the front of the hole, the middle of the hole and the back. The middle is displayed in large white numbering um, on screen and the front and back are below that in smaller numbering in blue. I like that they've gone for two colours because you can quickly look at the screen and identify the middle. Whereas before it was all white, so you had to kind of really focus and work out which was the middle, which was the front, which was the back. Now at a quick glance, I know that the middle is a large white um, numbering and I can tell straight away that, that that's the yardage I'm looking for. Um, it does the hazard yardages too. So this was a really good feature in the V2 and they, they've upped their game with that here in the V3 as well. Basically, if you've got bunkers in front of you or water hazards, you just go into the hazards mode option and then you choose um, to, to scroll through. So you just click up and down and it'll tell you where the nearest bunker is, it tells you what side of the course it's on, if it's on the left or the right, and it tells you the distance to reach the bunker or to carry it. And it's exactly the same for any water hazards too. So it will show you the, the water hazards in a little blue icon with water and the bunker, unsurprisingly, is yellow and sand. Even the little difference between that and the V2, having a bigger screen and having the icons in the color helps you to quickly identify whether or not it's a bunker you're trying to go over or a water hazard. So visually much, much better, much easier for the user to um, to quickly quickly notice the, the differences between the two. Um, also on the watch when you're playing, if you perhaps lose a ball or face a penalty, there are options on the watch to, um, to pick the penalty that's relevant. I would encourage you to read the instructions or follow the information online before doing this because it can be a little bit confusing as to when to um, implement the penalty. So do you do it immediately after you hit your tee shot out of bounds or do you go down to the ball and then press the penalty shot before you take your next shot? But the, the main thing is that all of this can be edited post round anyway. So if you do make a mistake with one of those features, you can look back at it um, after the round, which is good. After my first few rounds, what I personally noticed was that some of the tags, so my six iron and my putter, were problematic. Now, what I noticed with the six iron was it was saying that I was hitting a driver or a four iron when actually it was definitely my six iron. I contacted ShotScope about this and they asked me to, to double check whether or not the tag was actually working because I hadn't used the new tags, I had kept the existing ones in the clubs. Now what I found um, was in the watch, if you go into the settings menu, I'm just doing that just now to remember where it is. If you look under this thing called tags, I don't know if you can see that, there's tags. You can hold the tag up to the watch and to the strap and it will find the tag, okay, so it will detect it and it will tell you if the tag's working. So I held the six iron tag to the watch, nothing. I held the pitching wedge and it came up PW. So I knew then that the tag was probably faulty. So what I decided to do at that moment in time was to switch out all of the tags with the new tags, check them all and make sure they all work. So if there's any kind of discrepancies with the data, do go into settings, change it to find the tags and just check that the tag um, is registering when you touch it on the wristband or on the watch itself. And that way you'll know if there's maybe a problem with the, the tag not being picked up. I had quite a big problem with the putter tag. So every time I reviewed my round after for the first three rounds, I noticed that it was telling me that every single putt was within two foot. Now, you know, my short game's okay at times, but I was not hitting every single approach shot within two foot of the pin. It registered the amount of um, putts taken because the pin collect feature where you select how many putts you took, 
was working, but it was telling me that all the putts were two foot, so I had to keep moving those manually afterwards. Again, I contacted ShotScope about this, um, and they provided some useful information. So they asked me what type of putter grip I had. And then what they mentioned was sometimes there's a little bit of metal inside the, the tip of the grip, which interferes with the tags. So when I had taken my um, tag, I had cut the bottom off, glued it on top of the grip, but I'd done so on top of the little metal screwing cap on the grip. So what I did is I removed the tag, unscrewed that little um, super stroke metal pin, took it out, glued the tag back on, and now I notice when I'm playing, it picks up all of my strokes. So it must have just been interfering. Um, for me personally, one of the kind of downsides with the, the tagging system from ShotScope, well, there's, there's two issues, I think. The first one is that they ask you if you're using one of those types of grips where you can't put the tag into the top. They ask you to cut off the, the stem of the, or the screw of the tag and glue it on top. And for me, that's a bit of a kind of unfair thing to ask the customer to do because we don't want to have to go and cut tags to glue them on the top. Um, in doing so, what I've actually done is I've kind of cut the tag a little bit unsightly with my Stanley knife. Um, I've glued it on and then I've had to take it off to unscrew that cap, then glue it back on. And it's kind of made a little bit of a mess of the putter tag and the top of my putter. So from ShotScope, I would like to see a tag that is designed for these types of grips because they're really popular with people. But generally speaking, with the, with the device, it tracks all my shots really well. When I come to um, to analyze the data afterwards, there's not a lot of corrections that need made. Um, initially, there were with the putter. That's now been rectified. The six iron works fine with the new grip um, tag. So all in all, I've found that if I've taken 80 strokes, it's maybe got 80, 81. With the older models, sometimes I had to add strokes in for like bunker shots or maybe if I hit two from the same area. But with this one, it largely has been detecting my, my strokes, which has been really, really good. It's got dual uh, GPS activity. And what I like is that it really is accurate. Um, I hit one of my drives right next to a marker pole in the fairway. And when I got up, I hit my next shot. When I analyzed it afterwards and looked at the imagery, I was in the literally the same position. So um, certainly within 30, 30 centimeters, it seems to be very, very accurate. Um, so, just to, to kind of recap the things that, that I've, I would say I like about the V3, the main changes, visually miles, miles better than the V2. It's lighter, it's smoother, it's clearer, it's got a bigger screen, it's got the color display, and the strap's more comfortable, it doesn't look unsightly, it's a hell of a lot better. The packaging looks great, much, much, much improved. Um, the fact that it's got a 10 hour battery life, the battery life and the visuals were the two things that I struggled with with the V2. Both of them have been addressed and I think for me, that makes it in itself worth the extra money. So yeah, look and feel, battery, much, much better. I love the fact you've got watch mode. You can just use it when you're out and about. So I basically just keep it on my wrist all the time now. The things that I think not so great, as I mentioned, the tags, we really do need an extra putter tag um, in this and it needs to be designed for different grips. Even if it was a case of the, the user asks um, or is asked what type of grip they have at purchase point, then they can buy the right one for their setup. But asking the users to cut things isn't isn't ideal, and I find that a wee bit kind of frustrating. But it works now; it's done the job. Um, unfortunately, I have cut my tag, so if I then go to put it back on my old one, I can't screw it, and I have to glue it. Um, and I think the you know not showing the battery percentage at the top it's a very very minor thing. It's a personal thing for me, but I would kind of like to see that. But all in all, if I summarize, I think they've done a great job. 179.99, it's not a massive investment. You spend three, 400 pound on range finders. This gives you accurate GPS. It can be used for GPS only, or you can track your shots. The amount of data you get access to is incredible. Over 100 tour professional stats. So I'm always then looking at, at where I can improve. I put a new three wood in the bag the other day and I've used it a few times now. And I was amazed that I've been getting I can see I've been getting 13 to 15 yards extra for my shots. And what I really like about the shot scope is that they give you your performance average. So you can take a six iron and just you know, knock it out of the trees and only hit it 25 yards. You can mark it as a, um, a positional shot and it won't put it into your average for your six iron. So when you're looking at your stats, you're not saying, well, I only hit my six iron, you know, 100 yards because of all these little sort of chip outs. It takes that information, sets it aside, which other watches don't do. So you really have a good overview of how you're performing with each club when you're hitting the full shots. 
And then things like the proximity to the hole, your little chip shots, how many you're getting close within 10 foot, 15 foot, 20 foot. So a massive amount of data. Really, really impressed with the V3. Um, obviously, as I said, ShopScope sent me it for, for a review. I personally would have no problem purchasing one of these. Um, I have had the, the, the um, shot scope since V1, since V2. As I said, I've used the Game Golf and I wouldn't go back to the other products now. I think this is a, a complete winner for me. In future, if they could add a few extra features such as maybe counting your steps with it, if they're going to go into the, the area where we're looking at um, cycling and GPS and running, it could be a watch that could do everything. If it could do GPS for golf courses, the likelihood is it could do things like tracking your, your cycling or your um, your running. And then you don't need to use other devices and keep swapping watches or using your phone. And one of the other things I would love to see from ShotScope that I have mentioned before a few times, as somebody who practices, I find it a bit frustrating if I'm using it and then I hit a shot and I want to drop another ball and, and replicate the shot or play another one just to test it out. I have to remove the watch, otherwise it tracks it as another shot. An option to perhaps lock the, the device and do a kind of almost like in Tiger Woods in the, the golf games, a practice swing, to be able to hit another ball but not track that ball would be a really, really useful feature for somebody like myself who does a lot of practicing and just wants to see how the watch um, performs for the shots that I want it to track. And then for those that I don't want it to track, to be able just to disable that mode for one stroke would be would be really, really useful. Um, but yeah, all in all, impressive piece of kit. I don't think you'll be disappointed with a V3, if I'm honest. Um, if you've got a V2 and you're looking for something that looks a lot nicer, feels a lot nicer, then for me, it's definitely worth the, the, the upgrade. If you're quite happy with how the watch looks and how it performs in the battery life, um, and you just want the, the kind of stats and the general GPS, then the V2 will probably do the job for you, to be honest. Um, but if you've not got one of these and you're thinking about getting one of these, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. If you've enjoyed this review, please do um, like below, put any comments in. I'm happy to get back to you guys and to, to chat with the community. And also, if you want to go to my blog, which is andysgolfblog.co.uk, you'll find all of my other reviews. I've got um, golf quizzes in there. We've got um, PG and European Tour um, pre-event information and tips and things like that. So head over to the blog, let me know what you think and, uh, and post your comments below.